Hello, welcome once again to another edition of the Coach's Corner program. I'm Jeff Ruth, along with Hardy Boys Basketball Coach Jamie Pearson, Girls Basketball Coach Corey White. And uh, Jamie, a split for you. Corey, a split for you last week. Yeah. Uh, both teams one and one. We'll start with uh, start with the girls. Uh, a win against Indian Lake, and then uh, a game Friday night that I saw that, well, I think, some of the girls forgot to get on the bus in Indian Lake because it just there just wasn't a lot of energy in that game. Yeah, you, you will, we'll talk about it during the highlights. Yeah. Um, it's, we're going to look like two different teams. It's going to be like uh, yeah. Coach White's up here talking about two different teams. Um, Indian Lake, we, we showed up. We had every single reason to lose that game um, from the refing, the fouling, um, everything away game. It was home for them. Uh, they had height. We, we don't have height. Um, we show up, we play extremely well, and we win that game. Um, Friday night, we just don't step on the court. I mean, it was a close game. I told the girls at halftime, we're losing by five, um, and we haven't showed up yet. Mm -hmm. so we're, we're only down five points, yeah. and we haven't started playing yet. So um, <clears throat> nothing changed the, the second half, though, so we kind of got worse, and just two different teams. Yeah. It's kind of a mental battle now. All right. And the Jamie split for you. You you always want to get the if you have to sure. split. You always want to get the league win. You got the league win last week. Yeah, we uh, had an away game. I think it was our fifth straight away game, and it was in Ontario. And at the time, they were the you know the third the third best record in the MOAC, and uh, you know playing really good basketball. Had some big wins, and um, you know we uh, we didn't start playing very well up there. And uh, I think we were down five or seven at halftime, and we had a great third quarter, and we came out and we were able to, to overcome. And then um, we had Marysville on Saturday, and it's uh, we've talked about it before with Delaware and Big Walnut. It's it's a little bit different when you're playing Columbus OCC Division One schools than than it is with with some of our other games on our schedule. So. Uh, we, were, we weren't able to come up on top. We didn't play great. We fell by five, but, you know, our kids never quit, and uh, I appreciated the effort. Oh, very good. When we come back, we'll take a look at uh, some highlights from uh, both the girls and the boys. We'll also talk about the games coming up this week. We'll do that right after these words. Welcome to Harding Telecom Digital Media. Unlike television, print, and radio media, which are all one-way communications, Digital media creates an interconnected world of interactive communications that puts you in control of content creation and broadcasting. As a member of Harding Telecom, we have three ways of building your digital media skills. As an underclassman, you can take our semester-long class, Intro to Video Editing, where you'll be introduced to the latest hardware and software in digital media. Learn to create your own content with overlays, special effects, and audio processors. Your content will only be limited by your imagination. Telecom One is a year-long class that introduces you to the world of audio-video broadcast communications. Here you will learn how to operate video hardware and software, design sets, direct and produce events, and expand your editing capabilities broadcasting online and over our public access television channel. You will learn to produce daily news announcements and share your creations throughout our cable television and social media networks. Finally, Telecom 2 is our year-long class available for upperclassmen who have completed the prerequisite Telecom 1 class. Here you will produce and direct your own broadcast events. You will be put in charge of productions and lead other students through the introductory processes of media production. Many of our Telecom graduates have gone on to study broadcast media in college and launched careers as television news and weather personalities, Emmy-winning editors for nationally syndicated television shows, and audio production engineers. So don't hesitate to schedule Harding Telecom Digital Media. Talk to your guidance counselor or see Mr. Mullins in room 201. Back once again on the Coach's Corner program. And uh, Corey, we'll start with you and, and the girls. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the away game last week at, at Indian Lake. Well, um, we went there. We didn't know much about Indian Lake. Have we, you played Indian Lake we before? We have, and they were a uh, new addition okay. to the schedule this year. Um, I think we have a look at two year, two year deal with them, and we'll adjust from there. Um, went in, we knew one girl was averaging about 16 points and 14 rebounds, which obviously is going to be a problem with our height. Um, so we were worried about that. We knew we had to pick up the intensity on defense and make sure we smothered the guard so they couldn't get the ball to her. Um, I think we held her to, to 14. Which I think she, I think she might, may have had more rebounds than she did. 
points, um, which which is okay with our height. Um, mm -hmm. we, we created 20, 25, 26 turnovers, and we scored 22 points off of um, those transition points there. So it was a tough game. We got in a lot of foul trouble early. Um, I think we had the lead, the lead the whole second half, and they, they cut it close, and we picked up the intensity on defense again, and was able to come out there with a win. And then Friday night, uh, home, and I know you told Rob McCurdy and the Marion Star that for whatever reason, you seem to play better on the road than you do at home. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's some mental block there. Um, we, we do not play well at home. Um, I don't know if some of our fa fans come out and um, we just shut down because we get scared or we uh, <laughs> want to play too hard or I don't, I don't, I don't have the answer. I know it's a, it's a mental, ba mental battle, but um, we went to practice on Saturday. We didn't touch a ball. Uh, it was all uh, film and um, correcting a lot of our, our mental toughness stuff so yeah and turnovers certainly were a big factor Friday night a lot of them were unforced turnovers yeah a lot of unforced turnovers for for no apparent reason um, just kind of throwing the ball around just not making very good decisions um, something that we have really cleaned up the previous three games and I like we talked about last week we were finally headed in the right direction um, and then we played Pleasant on Friday yeah. all right let's go ahead and take a look at some of those highlights Um, here, I think our first two highlights here are Casey's knocking down a three and then Gracie's knocking down a three. Um, I think we had a game high assist that game. We did a great job creating creating turnovers, um, pressuring the ball, and then getting the getting the ball to open girls for, for them to score. And we capitalized. We shot the ball extremely well. Um, there's a great steal from Casey there to Anaya for the for the finish. And we had a lot of that that game. Um, we knew that we were going to be faster than this team. We knew we were going to be more athletic. Um, so we just pressured the ball. We stayed in a diamond press. I think the majority of the game, we kind of fell out of it the second and a little bit of the third quarter um, to change up our defense to try to cut down on our fouls. We don't remember the foul count, but uh, we had quite a bit of fouls. I think they were shooting one on one in the first quarter and the second or third quarter. So. Um, it was something that we needed to adjust. We had to adjust. It was new refs, different region of refs. They um, were calling the game a little bit different. We had probably four screens where they called moving screens on us. Anaya Mitchell, our point guard, for the last two years, she, I think, got three carry car calls. And I don't think she's been called for a carry mm -hmm. since she started playing basketball. So we went, we went into halftime and made a lot of adjustments. Um, and the girls just played extremely well. Um, they weren't able to handle our defense and the way we were able to pressure them, we were able to come away with a win. And a close one as well for the Eagles, yeah, right? Yeah, and I mean, the girls, like I said, the girls had every reason to give up and not fight back a couple of times when things weren't going our way, and we didn't. We uh, we made the, made the tough call and, and played hard. Um, we kind of talked about that in practice. That, you know, winning's hard and losing's hard. Um, you just kind of make that hard decision, what, which one you want to do. And against Pleasant, we decided to uh, to lose, and that's a hard hard decision, especially at home against a MOAC rival just down the road. Um, it's tough, and we talked about it a lot in practice on Saturday. We watched film for about an hour and had a lot to go over. Um, then we conditioned a little bit, and it wasn't we didn't condition because we played bad. We conditioned for things we didn't do, like little character things that we talked a lot about this year, character. Like, we didn't clean up the bench at the end of the game. Win or lose, we have always cleaned up the bench. Um, and I think that just shows you where our heads were that game. Hey, explain what you mean by clean up the bench. Just we, we, we clean up. We have water bottles, Gatorade bottles, towels, um, shooting shirts. You Home and away, win or loss, you make sure you clean up the bench. Uh, it's a little thing we do. It it's, has a lot to do with just character. Um, not the kind of basketball player you are. Not a, it's not a um, skill or talent thing. It's yeah. just uh, just a mental battle, and that's something that we have to get a lot better at. Um, as you can see, we can we can play basketball. We can play mm -hmm. at, a, at a high level if we show up mentally, yeah. and we we don't. We, you know, and, and the thing about Pleasant, they got five, six, seven girls that can shoot, mm -hmm. and whenever anybody's on the floor, they can shoot. 
and, and you're still looking for that third, fourth, fifth score to, to kind of, you know, get five, six points a game. Yeah, and then you can see that against Pleasant. We had three girls school, score, which was, um, that's tough, I think. Um, Indian Lake, I think everybody scored that played besides one girl. And she, yeah. I think she maybe played three minutes, so it was tough for her to even get a shot up. Um, and we've had a few games where this year where we celebrated everybody that played scored. Um, and Pleasant kind of shut us down there. So, yeah, we're still kind of searching who's going to step up. I mean, we talked a lot about Anaya Mitchell. She's, she's a gamer. She's going to show up every single game. Um, she's only a sophomore. She had 18 points against Pleasant. Mm -hmm. When she doesn't show up offensively, you know she's going to show up defensively. So how do we get the other girls, you know, to um, find find their niche and find their ability when when something's not going right? What else can you do right to to help yeah. the team out? All right. Very good. We'll be back with more on our coaches' corner program right after these words. <laughs> Once again, back on the Coach's Corner program, and uh, we're going to talk boys basketball uh, this time around. And uh, Jamie, uh, talk a little bit about the, the MOAC. Of course, we didn't meet for really about three weeks sure. over Christmas break. So just kind of uh, let the viewers know kind of where the MOAC stands at this point. Yeah, it's, it's really similar to last year. Uh, we play Pleasant, um, and that'll be the end of the first time through everybody on uh, Friday. We'll talk more about them in a minute. but. Um, it's Shelby on top, it's River Valley second, and I think we're one of the teams in third. And um, for us, it's, uh, it's we've, unlike last year, we played Shelby on the road, um, we played River Valley on the road, we played Ontario on the road. So our, in theory, to that point, the, the three best teams record-wise in the MOAC were all on the road. And so, you know, being young and having lost seven seniors, it's, uh, you know, there's some teaching going on, there's some growing pains, and. Uh, you know, we're, we're just trying, like most coaches, we're trying to get better every day. And uh, for us to go over and, 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 and win the game Thursday at Ontario, they, they have some, some players. They're well coached. Um, you know, it's, it was a tough atmosphere, a real nice facility over there, um, especially being down, you know, five points going into halftime, which, which we haven't been used to in the last four or five games. Um, you know, we made some adjustments, and it, it speaks volumes about our kids that they were able to to uh, do what we asked, and uh, you know, we were able to win by double digits. But it was definitely a, a good win against a, a good team. So uh, I think we sit third place. Um, you know, obviously, we still have aspirations of, of winning the league or tying the league. Um, that's easier said than done um, to knock off some of these other teams. But um, you know, for us, it, it starts with uh, Pleasant Friday because it's uh, another league game and uh, big rivalry game and. Um, you know, definitely they're capable. Either team is capable of winning it. So let's get through round one and, um, you know, kind of focus on what we can do to maybe stay in contention for a league title. Yeah, and I saw the Marysville game Saturday night. Uh, they had, you know, 6'8", six, 6'6", six, yeah. six, couple of 6'4", uh, guys, and that that's tough to defend. It is, and, and we're not used to seeing some, some of that length. And, you know, if you ask a, a basketball coach, uh, you know, one of the characteristics they love the best in their players is length. Because uh, you can just do so much with it in so many different ways, and uh, you know, uh, Marysville had, had returned basically, you know, their whole team from last year. We went over to their place and and lost by one last year. But uh, they're a team that's that's beat some of the top teams in Columbus, um, played some of the top teams in Columbus really tough. And so, for us to to be in that game, I think you know it speaks again speaks a lot about our kids. They're believing in our system and they're. They're, uh, they're just adjusted no matter who we play. They know they have to bring it. And um, again, we went through some stretches in that game against Marysville where, golly, I'm wondering if this is going to be a 20 point game. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, our, our kids were able to make plays. And, you know, we were, we were in it. I think we had it to seven or five in the fourth quarter. But, you know, you hit a shot, and, um, you know, you're right back in that. So yeah. we weren't able to hit those and, shots. And you were kind of playing catch up pretty yeah. much the, the whole game. They never really pulled away, yeah. but you could never really get it down to maybe one possession. Yep, they did a, a good job. They have a, a, a big kid, the 6'8 kid who probably be a Division One player that 
you know, they, they play smart basketball. They threw it into him and uh, let him shoot easy shots, and we, we battled him and boxed him out. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we weren't able to hit hit some big shots in the third and fourth quarter, and we had the good looks, and, uh, you know, they were able to make plays. So uh, we'll chalk it up as a learning lesson, and, uh, you know, I think we'll, we're better because we, we played a team like Marysville and a Delaware, and, and uh, you know, it's just going get to us, get us ready because, fortunately, we don't play Division two and Division three schools in the postseason. We play Columbus Division one yeah. teams, which is which just is a lot different animal. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from the two games last week. First of all, on the road at Ontario. Uh, beautiful gym over there, one of my favorite ones in the league. Uh, we have Jaden Jones, a senior point guard, uh, had a steal, got it knocked away um, for us there. Uh, some more Jaden Jones um, with the, the three for us. You know, he hit some threes early. We're a different team, um, and, and he hit one there, which really helped us. We started well in that game. Uh, Marquise Long, who's really been shooting the ball well lately. Uh, and then Ontario kind of came storming back. We're up 6-4 there. Uh, Braylon Dyer with a three. Uh, this is all first quarter action, and uh, you know we're feeling pretty good about things. Um, here we got uh, Leighton Jones making a big block, um, but we were up 17 to 12, and then they made a furious comeback. As you can see here, it's 29, 24 to start the third quarter. And Jeff Jones, who's, who's one of our captains and one of our unsung heroes, just does a little bit of everything, scores there, and then uh, you know. When we get Marquise Long the ball in space, really good things happen, and he shows his athleticism and his knack for being able to put the ball in the basket uh, with a nice play there. Uh, and then more Marquise, you know, he's kind of built like a guard, but he, he plays like he's a big man and uh, just does some good stuff for us, rebounding and, and some things there. But, uh, you know, there's Marcus Hemphill with the, the rebound, and when we can outlet it like that, and it's Marcus to Marquise, a lot of good things happen for us. And so, um, you know, uh, I don't know if we talk about this kid enough either for freshman. Uh, Marcus Hemphill, you know, with the rebound there, diving on the floor, um, does a little bit of everything for us defensively there with the block. Um, you know, for as young as he is, and when you measure, remember he's playing eighth grade basketball this year, he, uh, he definitely has, has shown us some stuff. All right, and then we move ahead 48 hours. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the Friday, Saturdays are tough. Um, I don't mind the Thursdays because you at least get a day to prepare. Um, but again, Marysville's a good team. Uh, here we had Trey Caddy who came in when we were down 12 and uh, he hit a couple threes to pull us back in the game. And when he shoots it well and, and Jaden Jones and Braylon Dyer shoot it well, we're, we're a different team. Um, here we have, uh, you know, um, Trey uh, kind of doing some things with the steal there. Um, you know, Trey likes to shoot it and when we can get Trey to play solidly in other areas, it, it makes us really tough. But uh, um, Jeff Jones seems to always end up with the ball and had the nice take and finish there. Um, down 10, down 6, down 12. Um, you know, Trey shoots a three there and is able to knock that down. Um, so we, we kept in striking distance, but we could never quite get over the, the hump. Um, Layden Jones with the steal there and then the outlet pass. Uh, I think this was the last play of the second quarter. But uh, I think that's Trey's third three of the night. And he, he shoots them from pretty deep, and we're happy when they go in. And uh, he hit one there. But, uh, you know, we tried to mix up our defenses, and, and we have some success sometimes when we're doing that. Braylon Dyer with the good hands there. Uh, and then Marquise Long, uh, again, down nine, hits a three there in the fourth to pull it to six. Uh, but as we've we talked about many times, uh, and I think that's another three uh, to cut it to five. But uh, we just couldn't get over that hump. So we, we fell by seven, you know, fouled late early. We probably was a little closer than that. but. Uh, Definitely a, a learning lesson for us against a, a really good team who I think last year after they beat us, they won six or seven straight in the OCC. So they're a team that's definitely heading in the right direction. And I think that'll really prepare us for the second half of the, the, the MOAC, but really start to prepare us for the Central District Division One tournament. Okay. We'll be back with more on our Coach's Corner program right after these messages. <laughs> Whoa, slow down there, Hot Rod. We know you're in a hurry to get to the historic OK Cafe located at 734 East Center Street, Marion, Ohio. And we know you can't wait to enjoy the great food and beverages of one of the most popular restaurants in town known for their famous handmade pizzas, subs, calzones, and more. And we know you can't wait to meet up with good friends for the best in live local entertainment, big screen sports action, bike nights with weekly contests and prizes, but what's the hurry? 
We're open daily from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 11 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. Fridays and Saturdays, offering dine-in, carry-out, and delivery. Oh well, some people just can't wait to get to the OK Cafe. Back once again on the Coach's Corner program, and uh, Corey, we'll start with you. Uh, two games, both on the road this week. Yep, we uh, start MOAC play, uh, second half of the MOAC play this week. Uh, we start Galleon on Thursday, and I'm um, away at Shelby on Saturday. All right, uh, Galleon, I know they've had some, uh, some challenges uh, this year, uh, so hopefully you can go over there and, you know, maybe – Make it, make it a statement yeah. game and, and play a lot better. But then, uh, obviously, you know how tough Shelby is. Yeah, it, it, it's tough playing Galleon on Thursday and then and then Shelby on Saturday. You never want to look past the team, sure. um, and Galleon gives you kind of every reason to want to look past them. Um, but we we kind of did that last year as a team, and we were tied at halftime with Shelby. So um, it's something we we learn from. We don't ever want to do. So um, I'm sorry, Galleon, not Galleon. Shelby. Um, so we, we got to get Galleon on uh, Thursday, and then we go to play a, a really tough Shelby team on Saturday. I, again, I think we match up really well, and we showed really good signs of um, playing Shelby at the beginning of the season. And kind of like we were talking about last week when I kind of um, put my foot in my mouth when we, <laughs> when we played Pleasant, uh, I think we'll be more prepared this time to play Shelby. I mean, a really young team with a lot more – time under their belt, so I'm hoping to go there and be a lot more competitive and hopefully uh, get a win. All right, sounds good. And Jamie, just one game this week, but, uh, you know, Harding Pleasant, uh, yeah. just, uh, I, I, one game a week with Hard it's Harding Pleasant, that's probably enough. Yeah, I, uh, I, I actually, you, you welcome the four days of practice, which you don't get a lot in the middle of the season, but, you know, the bad part is Pleasant's led by, you know, one of the better coaches in, in the Marion and Central Ohio area and Ben Snively. And, He's going to have something up his sleeve to, to prepare for us, so it's, his kids are going to have a lot of time. And uh, it's just a rivalry game, and it, 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 we were able to get them a couple times last year, so I know they're hungry. Uh, they have a group of kids that have been starting together for two or three years, some really talented kids. They pass the ball, move the ball as well as anybody that, that we see on our schedule, uh, and they can just shoot the lights out. It's kind of almost throwback basketball. I live by the jump shot, the three ball. Uh, you know, uh, Wiley Smith, uh, there's a blue ball kid, um, you know, uh, Trey Booker is one of the best players in the league and probably one of the highest scorers in the area. Uh, Carson King, another kid who's been come on. I know he's had five and six threes several games. So, uh, you know, we got to try to figure out how to keep the ball in front of us and, and, and keep the ball from going in on their end and then kind of be smart with it and, uh, you know, attack them. But uh, anytime it's a rivalry game, anything can happen. I know they'll be hungry. And I know our guys will be ready as well. All right, best of luck uh, Friday night. And, Corey, best of luck uh, in your two games this week. Thank you, thank you. Going to wrap it up for this edition of the Coach's Corner program. For uh, Corey White and for Jamie Pearson, I'm Jeff Ruth.